Around 45,000 years ago, a powerful uplift created by a series of strong earthquakes along the Cadal Fault transformed southeastern Australia's Murray-Darling Basin, where it initially completely dammed the Murray River before altering the course of it entirely, which ultimately affected the hydrology of the region in ways that are still evident today. The Cadal Fault, running north-south across the Riverina region of New South Wales and Victoria, from south of Echuca up to Daniloquin, impacted multiple rivers, including the Murray, Edward, Goulburn, Wackle and Campaspe rivers. These rivers, key components of the Murray-Darling Basin, were diverted and dammed by the tectonic activity associated with the Cadal Fault, leaving a lasting legacy on the landscape and ecosystems. This video was a hard one to make, I must say. It's incredibly complicated and the relatively few studies that do exist contradict each other in numerous ways. I've tried my best to piece it together as best as I can. One example of the contradictions that exist is that many cite 25,000 years ago as being the date of the damming, when in actuality 45,000 years ago was the most significant event, with intermittent seismic activity continuing up until 20,000 years ago. Multiple paleo rivers and paleo channels exist. To clarify, a paleo river describes the overall ancient river system that once flowed but no longer runs today, while a paleo channel refers to a specific former channel or segment within that ancient system. Both terms indicate relict features in the landscape, representing river paths that existed in the past but are now inactive, and I will do my best to highlight the locations of each of them in this video. The Cadell Fault lies within the Lachlan Origin, a region known for its tectonic complexity due to ancient mountain building events, faulting and folding. This area is distinct from stable cratonic regions found elsewhere in Australia, such as the Yilgarn and Pilbara cratons in Western Australia. Instead, the Lachlan origin is characterised by tectonic forces that have shaped southeastern Australia through subduction, folding, faulting and mountain building processes over the past 530 million years, leading to the formation of complex geological features and significant crustal thickening. The Cadal Fault stretches north-south from Daniloquin to Echuca, Visible as an earthen ridge along the Cobb Highway and extending southward into Victoria, this fault is notable for its influence on the landscape, forming a bifurcated scarp with a 12 to 15 metre high northern section and a 3 to 4 metre high southern section. A bifurcated scarp is a fault scarp that is split into two distinct ridges or segments, typically due to multiple uplift events or varying erosion patterns along the fault line. The uplifted fault scarp, known as the Cadal Tilt Block, altered the courses of major rivers and created an inland delta system, effectively transforming the Murray-Darling Basin into a complex network of rivers, floodplains and wetlands. To clarify, the initial uplift around 45,000 years ago raised the scarp by 10 to 12 metres, and subsequent events added another 10 metres over the following 25,000 years. The total cumulative uplift would amount to around 20 to 22 metres in some parts of the scarp over the past 45,000 years. This cumulative effect would be the total change from the initial base level before any uplift began. However, the current visible height of the scarp varies due to erosion and sedimentation over thousands of years. While the northern section of the scarp currently stands at 12 to 15 metres and the southern section at 3 to 4 metres, these heights reflect what remains after natural erosive processes have taken their toll on the landscape. It's for this reason that the Murray flows further south than it initially did, as the 3 to 4 metre elevation was far easier for it to bypass in contrast to the 12 to 15 metre uplift in the northern section of the scarp. It's worth noting that uplift in this region began with initial seismic events around 65,000 years ago, though the initial effects it had on the Cadal Fault is not precisely documented, as most estimates focus on the cumulative uplift and the major events that occurred particularly around the 45,000 year old uplift. However, geological evidence suggests that the uplift at 65,000 years ago was likely less substantial than the later events and that the Murray River continued to flow through Green Gully even after the uplift began 65,000 years ago. The uplift at around 45,000 years ago on the Cadal Fault is generally understood to have been part of a series of seismic events rather than a single isolated event. This time frame marks a period of significant tectonic activity along the fault, likely consisting of multiple earthquakes that collectively caused substantial uplift. These clustered events would have occurred over a relatively short geological period, adding up to the cumulative 10 to 12 metres of uplift. The Cadal Fault exhibits what is known as bimodal rupture behaviour, 
meaning it has periods of clustered intense seismic activity, followed by long quiescent intervals. During active periods, the fault may experience several moderate to large earthquakes over thousands of years, contributing incrementally to the uplift. Research suggests that the fault had a recurrence interval for large earthquakes approximately every 8,000 years during active periods. The 45,000 year old uplift altered the flow of the Murray River, blocking its original path through Green Gully, a paleo channel west of Mathura. Green Gully, which had served as the Murray's primary course for tens of thousands of years, was gradually abandoned due to the fault activity. Over time, the river adapted to the blockage, pooling behind the uplifted land and creating new routes around the Cadal tilt block. These changes in flow created a sequence of lakes and wetlands, such as Lake Mora, which formed as water backed up behind the obstruction. Additional fault activity and uplift events over the next 20,000 years caused further blockages and diversions. While Lake Mora and other lakes formed directly due to fault-induced blockage, Lake Kanyapala emerged under different conditions. Forming around 32,000 years ago, Lake Kanyapala resulted from vertical bed load aggradation in the Golden River. Vertical bed load aggradation is the process by which sediment, transported along the riverbed, gradually accumulates and raises the elevation of the river channel over time, often due to a sediment supply that exceeds the river's capacity to carry it away. Over thousands of years, sediment gradually built up within the Gulban, causing it to slow and spread into a lake as the riverbed rose to a level where it could no longer channel floodwaters effectively. Lake Kanyapala was sustained by flows from the Taligarupna Paleo Channel for around 10,000 years, until aggradation raised the riverbed, ultimately reducing the lake's water inflow and leading to its gradual drying as the river shifted its course and the area could no longer retain significant amounts of water. The Taligarupna Paleo Channel is the name for an ancient course of the Golden River. This Paleo Channel represents an older path that the Golden River followed before it shifted to its current course. As the Gadal tilt block restricted the flow of the Murray River, it gradually found a new course around the uplift, flowing eastward along what is now known as the Barma Millua Reach. This diversion became the Murray's primary route, allowing it to bypass the uplifted land and eventually reach Lake Alexandrina in the Southern Ocean. Over several thousand years, the river carved out distributary channels, including the Edward River, which provided an outlet for water flowing around the uplifted block. The Edward River, like the Gulper Creek, emerged as a distributary that supplied water across the floodplain. This channel system reflected the dynamic adaptations of the Murray to the tectonic forces in the region. These rivers collectively formed a network that enabled water to drain from the Murray and maintain a steady flow toward Lake Alexandrina. Around 550 years ago, the Barma Choke formed as a result of a natural avulsion event. An avulsion event is a rapid shift in a river's course where it abandons its existing channel to create a new pathway across the floodplain. A river undergoes an avulsion when sediment buildup or tectonic changes cause the existing channel to become unstable, prompting the river to find a steeper, more efficient path across the floodplain. This feature, now one of the narrowest parts of the Murray River, constrains the river's flow and causes seasonal flooding. Before the Barma Choke, the Murray would have followed a broader, less restricted path through the floodplain. The Choke's formation, however, created a bottleneck that narrowed the river's channel and limited its flow capacity. In the section of the Murray River that was dammed and dried out by the Cadal Fault uplift, significant landscape changes transformed the once flowing channel into a dry, abandoned riverbed. Without a continuous water supply, this stretch of river likely experienced increased sedimentation as sediment settled in the stagnant pools left behind. Over time, vegetation adapted to the dry conditions, with hardy plants and grasses gradually colonizing the exposed riverbed, creating new habitats for terrestrial species. This area may have also developed seasonal wetlands or isolated pools that provided temporary refuge for wildlife during rainy seasons, while remaining dry or semi-arid the rest of the year. The absence of flowing water meant that the river's former course eventually faded, leaving behind relic features such as old banks and terraces that now serve as geological markers of the river's ancient path. The Murray's diversion around the Cadal tilt block and the later formation of the Barma Choke transformed the landscape into an area of interconnected wetlands, forests and floodplains. The Barma Millua Forest, spanning the Barma National Park in Victoria, and the Murray Valley National Park in New South Wales provides habitats for diverse species. Seasonal flooding, exacerbated by the Barma Choke's restrictive flow, replenishes the soil with nutrients, 
supporting a thriving ecosystem that includes native fish, migratory birds and aquatic vegetation. The forest's ecological significance is underscored by its role in the Murray-Darling Basin. The red gum trees, which dominate the landscape, rely on periodic flooding to sustain their life cycle. These trees are well adapted to the floodplain environment, with deep root systems that can survive underwater and provide shelter for numerous species. The forest biodiversity is a direct result of the unique hydrological patterns established by the fault's impact on the Murray's course. The Goulburn River, although influenced by the Goodell Fault, underwent changes primarily due to sedimentary processes and natural diversions. Around 65,000 years ago, the Goulburn was deflected southwest, where it established the Taligarupna Meander Belt Ridge. The river continued to aggrade until around 23,000 years ago, when its channel became increasingly unstable. The Compaspe River, meanwhile, experienced fewer changes, but was slightly altered as the Goulburn and Murray Rivers adjusted to their modified courses. This river, less impacted by the fault, became a tributary to the altered Murray system, helping to form the complex deltaic system that characterises the Murray-Darling Basin today. After the primary uplift event around 45,000 years ago, the Murray River gradually adapted to its new landscape, taking several thousand years to re-establish a stable course that would allow it to drain continuously to Lake Alexandrina. By 25 to 20,000 years ago, following additional uplift and sedimentary adjustments, the Murray had carved a new path through the Barma Miluel Reach, enabling it to flow steadily to Lake Alexandrina. As the river settled into this course, Lake Kanyapala and Old Barma gradually dried up, reflecting broader hydrological changes in the region. This process highlights the Murray's resilience, as it managed to maintain a flow that ultimately reconnected it to the Southern Ocean. The sedimentation patterns and changes in the lake basins contributed to a landscape of fertile floodplains and expansive wetlands, providing a sustainable environment for a variety of species. The Goodell Fault uplift and its impact on the Murray-Darling Basin demonstrate the power of tectonic forces to reshape landscapes, even within a region like the Lachlan Origin. The fault's uplift events, occurring over tens of thousands of years, forced the Murray to adapt, creating distributary channels, lakes and floodplains that characterise the basin today. The formation of features like Lake Kanyapala, Lake Mora and Obama Choke reflects a combination of tectonic and sedimentary processes, illustrating the region's dynamic natural history. From the uplift of the Cadell Fault to the sediment-driven formation of lakes and alluvial fans, the Murray-Darling Basin is a living record of tectonic adaptation. The landscape continues to evolve, shaped by both ancient seismic events and ongoing sediment deposition, supporting one of Australia's most important ecological and cultural regions. I hope you found this topic to be as interesting as I did. If you enjoyed this, consider liking and subscribing to the channel for more videos just like this one. And as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.